I am Michelle Cromer. This is your Creating a Meaningful Life Tip of the Week. I had the good fortune and privilege of going to Egypt in March of 2023, and I wanted to bring to you something that I learned that was so fascinating to me. I've always been really interested in mythology and especially the death stories of different particular civilizations. And so the ancient Egyptians believed in the continuity of life and consequences. One of the ancient Egyptians' main ideologies was that the afterlife that they believed the soul was immortal and that the earth was only part of a larger plan and journey. They believed that the soul consists of nine parts and that just one of those parts was the earthly existence. So here we have what's called the judgment of life. Let's start with what it's on papyrus. Papyrus was a very expensive um, thing to put anything on because paper was non-existent. So you'll see papyrus, you'll see like shrouds where people were, you know, wrapped up, like you might've heard of the shroud of Jesus. Well, this papyrus we know then comes from a very wealthy, possibly royal family, but we found it in the tomb of Huneferus, who was a high priest to the royal family. So this is a really big deal in his life that he got to have this judgment of life. So starting at the top, Huneferus is in front of all of these gods begging to go into the afterlife and pleading his case on why he should and what a good ethical life he had. And then coming down, you see Huneferus is being escorted by a god. And this god is Anubis. And Anubis has what we call an ankh. And an ankh kind of looks like a cross, doesn't it? But it means everlasting life. And that's exactly what Huneferus wants. So now we go to the scale. So here we have Anubis kneeling down, trying to make sure that it's balanced because we have a feather from Mahat, which is Mahat is the goddess of balance and ethics and harmony. And we have Huneferus's heart. So we're trying to see if his heart is as light as a feather. Y'all have heard that expression. This is where it comes from. And thank goodness it is. So he gets to go into the afterlife because if it wasn't, then he gets eaten by this god, which is Amat. Now in the Egyptian mythology, if you get eaten, by this God, you're done, it's over, and there's no, there's nothing. In the Christian faith, you have heaven and hell. You get to move on, but just not necessarily to the place that you want. So now we move on to Thoth, and Thoth is the God of writing. And I think that's so interesting because in Egyptian art, they didn't have a, they didn't write this down. They showed in pictures. So they had a great relationship between art and words. And I find that fascinating. So now we have Huneferus, and now he's with another god, Horus. Horus has another ankh in his hand, meaning everlasting life, and he's presenting him to the, one of the main gods in Egyptian mythology, and that's Osiris. And Osiris is sitting on a throne, and you can tell that he's very important. And he is behind a lotus, everlasting life. And on top of the lotus are four figures, and they are his children. North, south, east, and west is what they represent, and they have a very important job in the afterlife. They take care of the four particular sections of the body so that they can be mummified. So then we have behind Osiris is his wife, Isis, which is the mother of Horus and then her sister, Nephthys. So here we have the judgment of life of one particular person. So I'm going to ask you, if you found yourself in ancient Egypt and you had to go through the judgment of life, is your heart as light as a feather? And if it's not, what are you going to do about it? Y'all ask me questions. Thanks so much, Michelle at michellecromer.com. Thanks.